Um, and moving on with our lesson, boys and girls, again, for this lesson today, when we start getting to our videos, uh, you will need to either have sock balls or a small type of ball. Um, for this lesson, when we get to the game broom board, you're going to need to have at least six sock balls. Um, but if you're not going to play that game, then one sock ball could work for the other games. Uh, we're going to also tell you that you need to have some tape. That's a picture of painter's tape. Painter's tape is the best tape to be using. Do not use duct tape. So I would ask the adult at home um, what you could use to make lines on a flat surface. If you have paper, paper also works. Just unfortunately, paper is going to move on you. Um, so, you know, some clear tape, some masking tape, or that blue painter's tape is a really, really good tape to use because it comes up very easily. And you'll see in the video the tape that we're using. And if you can get a broom, if you have a broom at home, which most people do, um, you can use a broom for this game. However, if you're not, if you don't have a broom, which is totally okay, or the adult at home doesn't want you using a broom, um, you can use your foot, uh, and you could also roll the ball out of your hands if you wanted to. Um, and that's going to bring us to our first game of boys and girls. Our first game is broom board. This is a different type of game, but very similar to the game shuffleboard. I'm going to show you very quickly in a fast paced video, how to create your broom board court and not in this video, but when we start showing you the rules of this game, we'll go over how to score points and what each line means. broom board just try to remember our rules that we use when we had uh when we were playing hockey in the gym this part of the broom should never go above my knee keep this on the ground at all times so you don't knock anything over in the house like lights tvs or anything on the wall and when you're holding on to the broom try to have your both thumbs pointing down to the bottom of the uh broom which would be our blade this plastic piece and these bristles we're going to call that our blade if we're going to use the broom like this now you will see the person that I am playing with a little shorter than me. So it's a little tougher for them to have their hand on top of the broom where my, mine is right here. So they might leave this hand looking like this and have their hand like that because it's a little more comfortable for them. Um, but if you can try to work your way to having both thumbs pointing down, because again, this is gonna help us with our hockey skills when we get back into hockey. Um, now looking over here, my team is going to be the white team. I'm going to have the white ball, the white sock balls right here. My partner is going to be using the black sock balls on this side. And we're going to alternate shots. So in this video, the camera might be passed back and forth. I'm sorry, but the we only have two people here. So the person who's not shooting is responsible for using the camera. So I'm going to set myself up. I'm going to bring this over here. Now, any shot that I take where my feet are over this line, it's up to my partner or the person I'm playing against to tell me to back up. If I end up shooting and stepping over this line, that is a foul. My feet must stay behind it. Now, that doesn't mean that my stick can't go over the line like this, but my feet have to stay back here. So I'm gonna set myself up. Again, looking down there. Now, a little different than hockey boys and girls, I'm not gonna be on the side like this. I'm probably gonna be behind the ball a little bit more. And I'm gonna try to push it down and I thought I had a point, but it rolled off to the side. And if you remember the videos we showed about bowling, boys and girls, it's very important to try to have a ball that's completely circular or completely like a sphere so that when it rolls, it does not roll too much to one side and you get a straight roll. So I would pass the stick off to my partner. Take the camera for right now. It's her turn. She would get ready with her black sock ball. Open board. There's nothing down here. She hits it down and she got one point. Now for her, 
that's a, that's a pretty good spot to put a ball because now she's blocking some of the board and she's already making sure she's giving herself a point. Now in this game, boys and girls, now you'll see, I'm gonna pass this off. I can knock that black ball out of the way. If my next shot, I knock this black ball that way, that means that her one point is no longer there. Wherever my ball is, is now if I can get a point or not. So I'm gonna set myself up. I noticed that the ball might be a little wobbled, so I'm gonna try to fix it. I put it down like this. I'm looking that way, I try to hit it. Ooh, and it rolled too far past, and now I don't have any points again. I'm gonna hand this off to my partner. It's now her turn. She's gonna be careful not to knock her ball off, but she still wants to try to get some points. Ooh, great roll, excellent. I hand it back off to my partner. We are down to our final roll. Now, when we get to our final roll, we're gonna have to count up our points. So I have to make sure I can get at least something here so I don't have a zero for the first round. Oh, and I missed it, I couldn't get it there. Now, the important part here, any ball that does not cross this blue line, you must clear it out immediately. It has to get away because it's not being counted, it does not cross that line. I hand, it, hand the stick off to my partner, and it's now their turn for their final roll. Come down here to get our score. The first rule we're going to follow is that we're not touching any of the sock balls until my person that I'm playing against and I have agreed upon what the score is for this round. So by looking down here, we see that we have three of the white balls that have zero points, and we have two of the sock balls that appear to be in the one point area. So my partner, we would say, how many points do you think you have? She tells me. Two. Now I look down, I say yes, two is, a, two is what we can agree upon, and we would make sure that we mark down in our scorecard that for the first round, my partner got two points, and I got one, zero points, sorry. I get zero points, and we move on to the second round. So for our second round, because I went first in the first round, it would now be my partner's turn to go first. So she would get the stick, and now she is starting to get her first roll in for her second round. Again, she has the black. She rolls it down. Ooh, that was a good one. And it just veered off to the right for no points. She would hand me the stick. Now, boys and girls, the first time I felt like it was a little uncomfortable doing it here with my thumbs down like a hockey stick. So I'm gonna change and try to do it the opposite way this time and put my hand, my top hand with my thumb up. I get down here. And boom, my change worked. So now I get my first points for right now because again, she could knock that off. And it's now her turn. Ooh, very good roll. Now, I'm gonna leave that right where it is. Because again, we want to leave all opportunities to get more points or knock some other person's ball off. I'm here, getting ready, I'm going to go down, pass the ball down, and boys and girls, let me just explain this to you again. This is a very good roll because I protected this ball. If, even if my partner, I was going to call you Mrs. Powers, but my partner was able to knock this ball off, this ball would still be in a good spot to get one point. So now it's my partner's last turn. Oh, and it rolled out. So then she would pass it off to me.
I would get my last fall here. I'm gonna try to pass it down. And now we would come down here for the score. So we come down here with the score and I'm gonna look down and I say, I think I have three points and I think my partner has two points. Now my partner has a ball that looks like it could be on the line. However, when we get down really close to it, we see that even though it appears to be over the line, it still is not touching it. So that would be still two points. So I tell my partner, I think you have two points. I think I have three, po uh, three points. And I would ask her if she agrees. She gives me a thumbs up. So we know that we are good to go to the third round. And you would keep on playing. Now, again, we can clear the board. And you would keep on playing, boys and girls, until you get done with nine rounds and add your score up at the end and see who got the most points for our game of broom ball.